Okay, fluid artists, it happens to all of us. You paint something wonderful, and then the next day, you find this. Or this! Well, today I'm going to teach you how to fix that and restore your painting to its original brilliance. Let's get started! So here is the piece that I'm going to be touching up today. So the most obvious thing that I need to do is this fly trail, which cuts right through our design. But there's a couple other things. For example, around here you can see that the white is not pure white, because the white covered up some colors that were underneath. And it doesn't look as nice because the white is transparent. So I'm going to be adding some more white along here to cover this up. We're going to be covering up this fly trail. Obviously it's very easy on the white sections, but I'll show you also how to continue your design along so that you can't tell that there was something that went through it. And then I'm also going to be adding some white uh, kind of spirals here in the middle to brighten up this center and make it look more like the rest of the piece. For doing brush touch-ups, it's very helpful if you save your leftover paints from the pour and just put them in a little cup with a lid. That way you know that you have exactly the same color um, and it's already mixed up and everything. I do like to do my touch-ups with the pre-mixed, not pre-mixed like store-bought pre-mixed, but like fluid paint as I would use in a pour rather than straight from a tube. It helps to uh, not get brush texture in your touch-ups. Let's get to work. So I'm going to begin by painting white over these areas where the color is showing through. Whenever you're adding white as a, a touch up afterwards, make sure you put it on nice and thick because white, it's such a light color, it's easy to see through it. And when you're using a diluted paint like you would for a pour, you're gonna need a nice heavy coat, otherwise it won't cover up the color. And frequently you'll need a couple of rounds. But particularly here on the side, I'm just putting it on as thickly as I possibly can. And that covers up most of it. So for most things, all you need is one layer. Sometimes you might need a couple. Try to smooth out your edges so that you don't have great big lumps of white paint with like a hard edge. Whenever you're using diluted paint, you're not going to have a whole lot of brush texture. But still, if you put something on really thick, you might be able to see that edge. So try to make it thick over what you're trying to cover and then sort of fade out the sides into the rest of the canvas. Okay, now that I've gotten those sections painted over, it's time for me to do this spiral here in the middle. So the spiral, I kind of have some lines that I did while the paint was wet where I traced a uh, paint the end of a paintbrush through the wet paint to create that spiral. So I'm kind of following those lines and I'm starting on the outside and working inwards so that I can get a nice uh, kind of balanced spiral and end up in a good spot. For my second layer of the white paint, because this is going to take a few layers to cover up all these dark colors, for the second one, I would recommend starting in the middle and working your way out. That way you're not sticking your hand in wet paint as you're making your spiral. But yeah, I just worked gradually from outwards to inwards, trying to figure out, okay, how, how wide should these lines be? Because you want to make the basic shape of the spiral line, and then once it's in place, then you figure out, okay, should it be wider? Should it be... You can't really make it narrower, but how, how big do you want it to be? How much white do we need in there? And then just adjust it as you think is best. All right, so I've done a lot of the touch-ups of white. The bug trail is pretty much hidden right now. It took a couple of layers to get it like totally covered with white, just because white can be kind of transparent. Um, and I also added a nice swirl in the middle, and that also took two or three layers just to make sure that, uh, that the spiral was nice. Now it's time to start uh, painting over these stripes here. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take my colors of leftover paint and just one by one I'm going to go over the spots where the bug trail crossed them. So for example, why don't we start with the ultramarine blue and just bit by bit cover up those trails. So some of these lines are quite fine. You just want to carefully continue the line. Sometimes your leftover color is not going to be exactly the color that you need. And so if it needs to be lighter, you can mix it with some white, or you can just like put it on a little bit thinner. Sometimes you'll need to add like a layer of one color and then cover it with another color in order to achieve the exact same look as what there is in the painting. All right, I think that's a good start on the ultramarine blue. So I'm gonna clean my brush off just going to put some water in a little tray or a lid that I don't need. Clean that off. Now, as I'm looking at this, there's some yellow. Now the yellow, because it is such a light color and also a transparent color, if I just put this straight on, for example, right here where there's green, the yellow will not cover the green. The green will show through. So before I put yellow on, I'm going to put white underneath so that when I put the yellow on, it'll have a nice clean base to layer onto. So any light color where you want that color to be really kind of true to what the color should be, if you put white down first, then it'll be a nice true color. All right, that was easy. Not too much yellow in here, so not too much white needed. So in this painting, there are some places where the colors kind of blended together and formed sort of a green, but we also have this olive green color, so it's hard to tell where was it that the colors blended into a kind of muted green color, and when is it actually this color? So wherever I can't quite tell, I'm just going to start with this, and then if I need to add another color, I can. Sometimes the color that you're trying to match, you can't, you can't blend it in perfectly so where you can't see it at all. So if that's the case, what you want to do is just have energy extending in a different direction to the trail. So the trail is cutting this way, so we want to continue our lines going this way. That way you won't notice the trail because all the lines of energy are going in different directions. So if you have to sort of paint on new elements in order to hide that trail, just make sure that it's extending, you know, in different directions than the bug trail, and it'll hide it. Now we'll do some of the cerulean blue, this lighter blue. So already these stripes are starting to come together. It's looking a lot less like a trail going through. And we just have a few more colors on the first pass and then certain colors may need a little bit more 
if the first round didn't cover it all the way, but for the most part, we're getting close. All right, some copper now. Okay, now that the white paint has dried, it's time to add the yellow on top of those white sections, and it should show up much brighter than it would have if I just painted it over the green or the blue or whatever happened to be in the place where the yellow should have been. All right, so I've got all the colors layered on where I think they should be. I need to let this dry and then see whether I need to add any other colors or whether it looks good as it is. Okay, the touch-ups are done. Let me show you how this looks. So first of all, from a distance, you would never even know that that fly trail had been in there, right? All right, so this is where the trail began in the blue, practically invisible. Can you even see where the trail had been? If you can't, that means I've done my job right. Okay, there in that cerulean, you can see there's a little bit of lightness there, but it's hardly noticeable. From an angle, you can see a bit of raised texture where I painted over the white, just because you have to add so much white paint in order to cover that there's a very, very slight texture. But once that's varnished, you won't notice that much at all. All right, so here along these stripes, you can see if you look really closely where the trail kind of went, but because I have continued the color of all of those lines from a distance, you would never ever know. Same over here. If you look really closely, you can go, oh yeah, that's where it went. But then even right here, that's where the fly had ended up, and you can't even see that at all. So. It just takes a little bit of work, some careful, uh, you know, copying of the colors that are in your piece, and you can really take uh, something that could ruin your painting and, and pretty much erase it. So then in the middle, what I did was I painted these spirals, which I had kind of made with a, like a stick in the painting, but I couldn't get enough white paint in there. The spirals were tricky because I had to brush paint those in and do multiple layers because the white just didn't look bright enough until I had done about three layers on each spiral. But it really cleans up that center. So don't be afraid to make patterns in your painting that weren't already there. Brush touch-ups can be used to basically take it back the way that it was before something ruined it, or they can be used to change it to make it look exactly the way you want it. So I hope that this was helpful in showing you how to clean up a fly trail in a painting and also just add some basic brush touch-ups so that you can make your painting look exactly the way you want it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it gives you the courage that you need to do some brush touch-ups on your own paintings. I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.